with a fine weekend, a powerful motorbike and a girlfriend on the back, the Tun-Up boys set off. Two short days for riding high and fast, to wind and weave, and often to be a menace. behind the appalling accident rate of these teenage motorcyclists, there are nearly two million enthusiasts in Britain who ride motorbikes and scooters most weekends and never hit the headlines. For they're too busy looking after their machines, organizing club meetings, helping others who are genuinely interested in motorcycling and attending the hundreds of rallies run by the 800 motorcycle clubs in the country. To the majority of motorcyclists, going for a ride is a family affair. And at the end of it, there's usually a get-together, like this club rally open to everyone at Bewley in Hampshire's New Forest. There's always plenty going on at these rallies, and events for everyone to enter. The proudest owners clean and preen their machines for hours. Then the judges get busy to find the best kept bikes. Different events test the rider's skill and control of their machines. But here, instead of speed, it's the slowest rider who gets the applause. At the Montague Motor Museum, the vintage models of a more leisurely period attract the visiting motorcyclists. Today, when the average motorcycle is as fast or faster than the average car, and the rider is more exposed to injury than a driver, many people feel that the training facilities for motorcyclists are inadequate. There are only 140 such schools in Britain, all run by the RAC. But there are more than 10,000 car driving schools. Britain has been building motorcycles for nearly 70 years. Today, the industry employs more than 70,000 people and turns out over 100,000 machines a year. One third of this output, five million pounds worth of machinery carefully packed and crated, goes for export. America is Britain's biggest overseas customer, especially for high-powered machines, but they go all over the world. As well as running his parish of Paddington Green, London, the Reverend Bill Shergold, himself a keen motorcyclist, has also found time to do something for the teenage Tun-Up boys. From his old parish in Hackney, he runs what is called the 59 Club, a church club to which black-jacketed rockers flock from every part of the country. Started in 1962, the club had 5,000 members within 18 months. Although this is a church club, its purpose is to bring together young people with a common interest, motorcycling. Many of them have probably forgotten what the inside of a church looks like, but recently, Mr. Shergo was asked by a group of them to hold a service for motorcyclists. Hundreds of rockers turned up for it. club members join every week, and the Hackney premises have already become too small. More and more of these teenagers ask Father Bill, as they call him, for confirmation and communion. Many of them join in local social work and help charities, but naturally, the biggest attraction is the weekly get-together, when the clubhouse is thrown open to all young motorcyclists.
uniform is black leather. Their hair, a sergeant major's nightmare. And the two words on everyone's lips, the tongue, 100 miles an hour. Apart from summer outings and winter evenings in the clubhouse, many of Britain's motorcycle clubs devote time to giving others a taste of their sport. Every year, members of the Southampton Club take boys and girls from a local children's home for a day's run. If there aren't enough sidecars to get them all in, then other members bring cars. It's out to the open spaces for the day for these youngsters. And even if they don't get rides on the wild ponies, their chauffeurs for the day will always help out. Ride a motorbike? Go on, nothing to it. From a house in South London, 4,000 motorcyclists may be called out on a mission of mercy at any time of day or night. They are members of the Volunteer Emergency Service, an organization started in 1962 by Mrs. Margaret Ryerson and her husband. Hospitals, welfare societies, public health authorities, blood transfusion centers, anyone in fact with an urgent transport problem that concerns people's welfare, ring this house and the emergency service goes into action. The volunteers are scattered throughout the country and a phone call is put through to the nearest. These missions are entirely voluntary. The riders pay for their own petrol and they even pay to join the organization. 17-year-old Chris O'Hanlon, one of the volunteers in Surrey, is still at school. But here, he's being called out to deliver blood urgently required by a local hospital. At the blood transfusion centre, no time is lost. Soon he's on his way again with a box strapped to the back of his bike that could mean the difference between life and death for someone. Someone who might even be a fellow motorcyclist. Another ride is over. One, like so many others, that never makes the news. There are nearly two million motorcyclists in Britain, and to most of them, a ton is what it always has been, just 20 hundredweights. weights.